everyone, what's happening everybody? It is a rainy day, rainy morning here near Ubud, Bali. And of course we picked today to go on a road trip to the east side of Bali called Sidaman. Uh, that's where we're gonna be staying the night, checking out some beautiful rice fields, maybe some waterfalls, some other more local, low key, less tourist infested besides us, areas of Bali, Indonesia. And this is the thing about tropical places. The weather says no chance of rain. It can just downpour on you at a moment's notice. Luckily, it's gonna lighten up a little bit, I hope. Should be a fun little adventure. Just wait it out and then I'm gonna show you some more beautiful stuff off the beaten path in Bali. <laughs> We're 30 minutes into our drive. Stop number two because of rain. It's supposed to be the dry season. Ooh. Oh wow! So now that the rain was letting up and we were getting a little bit outside of the main towns in Bali, we were truly feeling the adventure and like we we're getting lost in exploring East Bali, which is the beauty of riding a motorcycle in Bali. You can go through some areas where there's more local people and you can truly get out to that beautiful green lush scenery that we're seeing and showing you right here on East Bali near Sidaman. And welcome everybody to Gumbling Waterfall. Waterfall, our first stop, our first attraction site to see in East Bali on our way to Sidaman and sort of seeing some other really popular Instagrammable attractions that you've probably seen online. And the really cool thing about Gambling Waterfall is one, it's a tourist attraction but it's not super busy. There's a whole lot of space and the walk is a little bit steep up to the waterfall. There's little levels, there's little layers you can check out and you get a really nice view from the top here which we can see of the valley, some really lush vegetation, some mountains with some a bit of a mist covering it, giving it a beautiful atmosphere. But besides all of these things, the number one reason I wanted to check out the Gambling Waterfalls is because who isn't a sucker for a good infinity pool, right? No, I'm not talking about those really nice villas, expensive bamboo houses with those infinity pools over the edge of a cliff. Here we're going to nature's made infinity pool. This one, you can get in, no one's gonna tell you not to, and has a beautiful overlook of the valley and the sights around us. So we're gonna hop in that really quickly, and yeah, just really enjoying the gambling waterfall here in East Bali. She's coming back, it's my turn. Wish me luck. So gambling waterfall and the surrounding scenery was so beautiful, but we ended up getting caught up in the rain. See, look at those little two cute kids under that bridge on our way more east to actually reach our Airbnb. And we made it everybody to our Airbnb here in Sidaman, Bali. After a lot of rain, getting wet, some intended, some not intended, of course. We made it to our Airbnb, which is actually a really quaint, pretty little area surrounded by this little jungle, sort of bamboo little forest, a little pretty walking path. And we have a nice spacious bed, a little kitchen area, which we can use if you want to cook some food, everything you would need. Great news, everybody. The people that were staying above us in a really cool unit canceled. So the host gave us the opportunity to upgrade if you're interested in. And one of the cool things you can do in Cedarman is stay in these beautiful bamboo Airbnbs. So luckily, we took up on his offer. So let me show you my new improved room tour here, a little bit east of Cedarman, pretty much Cedarman still. Let's check it out. To say we were happy our room was upgraded was an understatement because the place we were staying at now was an all bamboo, more than just a room. It was like a little bit of a penthouse. Well, not really. And Vanessa had some good news to bring to my attention. What's the good news? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I forgot my plug in everybody. This is the best news ever. Oh my gosh, even the hangers are bamboo. What? That's so cool. Do you guys want to see another really cool perk about this place besides the bamboo and made everything in the book about Obi-Wan Kenobi? Right well, let me show you. The really cool perk is I can just peek over and watch Vanessa as she goes number two. <laughs> I can see right in the bathroom. <laughs> and of course, we also have this cool little balcony area to go out, just like the other one. This one is, you guessed it, made out of brick. 
We were so happy that we made it to our Airbnb and were able to just relax and enjoy the beautiful setting and architecture. And eventually we were pretty hungry and we did not want to go back out into the rain for a meal. All right, everybody, it's dinner time. Let's go eat. My dinner date. So the great thing about this Airbnb is they offer dinner. It's a little simple, but not supposed to be anything that diminishes the quality of the food. They offer a nice mi goreng and nasi goreng, or it smells nice. We'll see as we eat this and our beautiful little bamboo second story dining table slash bed <laughs> with a nice bean tang, of course. Bon appetito. And good morning, everybody. Here we are with our day two here in Cedarman, East Bali. And I'm just drinking my nice cup of coffee, instant coffee, of course, but hey, it means just instant, I can become instantly caffeinated, so that's a plus. But breakfast is included, which we're gonna get hopefully soon, so we can go in and begin our day two exploring Cedarman, including some really notable palaces, maybe some cool viewpoints, and just some other natural beauty we can hopefully stumble upon along the way. Because so far, East Bali's a lot less built up, it feels a lot more, like you're just in nature away from tourists and the crowds a little bit more peaceful and relaxed so so far we're loving it day one got rained on a lot so hopefully today not as much rain <laughs> but let's begin hopefully get some breakfast and start exploring more of bali so with the delicious and nutritious breakfast in the sun seemingly on our side for the day we were so excited to start exploring but it was not long before we were already stopped again this is what happens when you get off the beaten paths guys a tropical island, a lot of wind, a lot of storms. Can't go where you need to go. But hey, at least the rice views, the mountain views are really gorgeous. And it's an adventure. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we're at our first stop of the day for our little exploration of Karangasam or East Bali. And this is Bukit Chinta, seeing Mount Agung. Now, the thing is, you can't really see it. You can see where it could be, but there are so many clouds covering it, so. This is really only a place you should come if it's a clear day and you can definitely get a good view of Mount Agung. Unfortunately, a lot of our itinerary is based along getting a good sight of this beautiful, massive volcano, the tallest point in the whole island, about 10,000 feet, or like 3,000 something meters. Um, but hey, there's still some other really cool places we're gonna check out, such as one really close by, about 10 minutes away. So this wasn't uh, you know, a waste of time to stop here along the way and just check it out and see maybe if we could get lucky. I've heard that if you come in the morning, it's a better time, usually with clearer skies, but it's still really pretty. We can still see some rice fields in the base of the mountain that is not covered by all of these clouds. So hopefully the clouds give us a break today because I want to see that beautiful behemoth so close by in East Bali. So let's go on to the next destination. Let's go. All right, everybody. So we're at stop number two of the day, which is Terta Ganga. Terta Ganga, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's a really beautiful sort of garden. And the main attraction is this little section area with these beautiful little stone pillars which you can walk through like step by step across the pond. But in the pond are these massive, I think they're koi fish, I don't know. But they're varying colors and sizes and shapes, but they're massive. You can buy fish food and feed them if you want to partake. It's a really pretty, peaceful, scenic area to walk around with little fountains, lots of flowers, lots of cool little touches. I don't believe it's a temple. I think it's just a garden. Maybe it's sort of like a palace area, but not entirely sure. There's also lots of restaurants and places to eat around here. So we actually ate at Tartaganga and we were starving. So we had a veggie burger, a samosa, which I showed you earlier, and roti chennai, which is like one of my favorite things coming from Southeast Asia. Definitely a tourist attraction. Definitely a little bit more busy than other places we've been, but it's a really cool place to check out. Only 10 minutes away from the last place. So stay with us as we check out some more places. All right, everybody, and we just finished up at Trutaganga, and now we're on our way to attraction number three of the day, which is called the Lahaman Suite, Lahangan Suite, I think, one of the two. I'll have it in the video right now. Anyway, this is the craziest, steepest road we've ever taken in our life, and we have a little tiny Scoopy, which is like the smallest CCs. It doesn't have a strong engine, so we're like leaning forward to go up the hills, it's very funny. But we had to stop really quickly because these views are sensational, everybody. The green rolling mountains with the beautiful ocean in the background. Literally reminds me of Hawaii. Same exact sort of shapes of the mountains, and you normally don't see a really good water view from these mountains here. Maybe on the east side of Bali you do, but not anywhere we've been thus far. So we had to take a little stop to enjoy the views. Hopefully we can get a really good view of Mount Agung from Lahangan Suite itself at the end, but we'll keep you updated through our fun little journey. Let's check it out. All 
sorry everybody after that treacherous ride. I was literally like off-road and using one of my feet while holding the accelerator all the way. We finally made it to the beautiful La Hangan Suite. Just wanted to double check to make sure I said it correctly. And luckily, which has been covered all the morning, Mount Agung is starting to poke through the clouds a little bit. So we can't see its entire self and its magnificent, glorious beauty, but we can start to see the top of the cone of the volcano and a decent amount of its base. So I'm really happy, really fortunate to be able to see more of the volcano than I was anticipating seeing today, which would have been a really cool thing about this whole viewpoint and everything we've done so far. So let's go check out the actual claim to fame of the suite itself. So one really cool thing about the Lahangan suites up here is that they have a bunch of different really cool viewpoints, such as this like bamboo canoe, and it rhymes, I didn't even realize that, and a little another bamboo area, and a little bamboo heart. So lots of bamboo little viewpoints of the east side of the island where I think we can even see a little bit of the Gili Islands in the background, which is really freaking cool, and lots of mountains and black sand beaches, and a little bit of mountain gung, but now it's pretty much like all covered up. So really cool to see that here. Guys, so we made it down that mountain. No danger, it was all fine. Little do we know, our biggest danger yet was waiting for us around this curve. Let's go see if I can show you guys. Oh man, my helmet's <laughs> up. The craziest <laughs> thing I think I might have seen in my life. No, not that crazy, but really cool. Let's go check it out. It wasn't there anymore, guys. Sorry. Sorry, it was a snake. It was a very long, skinny, like green. Blue, yellow. Blue, yellow snake. Yeah, and we were this close to running into it. Yeah. I kind of just like, curved Whoa. around and then and to put her legs up because she was afraid. I of, did? Yeah, I think so. I oh. don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Liar. That was pretty cool. It was, it was very cool. And just down the road from the Lenthagen Suite, I'm sure I messed up that like a hundred times already. We have a nice uphill walk to the beautiful gates of heaven, aka Pura Lampuyang, which is literally just a few minutes down the road and has that beautiful white gate overlooking Mount Agung from lots of clouds, so hopefully we get a good view. Hopefully it's not too busy. And hopefully I can get my breath back soon. All right, everybody, and we finally arrived at the gates of heaven, Puerto Lumpuyang. Now, what they don't tell you is when you come here, this isn't an entrance ticket. This is a queue number that you show the people because this is the number that you'll be called for your picture up there. And we're 394. We're at 290 something right now. 290? 290? Close to 300. The guy told us an estimated two hours of wait time. We're definitely not waiting for two hours, but the queue is kind of moving a little bit faster, so we shall see how long it takes. If it takes too long, we'll skip it. Or we went, but maybe we'll have a really good Photoshop picture for you at the end, which maybe you can tell me in the comments. Is that a real picture? Is it a Photoshop? Maybe it looks so real that it looks like it has to be Photoshopped. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see if we actually make it here. Either way, it's still really cool to check out this thing and have this beautiful complex behind us, all these stairs. And yeah, at least it's a little overcast and the clouds do look really gorgeous, so we shall see. Hey everybody, there's little V. Another perk about coming up here is the view is pretty sensational. You can see a large portion of the northern part and eastern part of the island here. And yeah, you get a nice view of Vintage Point at the temple. It's really a pretty small place but it looks like there's another main sort of garden temple area situated behind this beautiful white gate, but I've never seen one that color yet. So it definitely makes it a unique experience. We'll see if my verdict is, I recommend you coming here, yes or no. So that was the Pura Lampuyang temple, definitely the most Instagrammable, Instagram, uh, I don't know, driven, picture driven attraction in Bali that we've been to so far. We got there, waited about one hour for a picture, and guys, we got our pictures. Come check them out. <laughs> Now we are back on the motorbike cruising through East Bali, which if you cannot tell, was the highlight of this entire journey. <laughs> Alright, so this road is treacherous as heck, but look what we came across. A massive, I think it's a Hindu uh, sculpture, don't know exactly who, but it's beautiful, it's gold, it looks like a little place of worship, but we gotta check out the waterfall, we're running out of time guys, it's getting a little bit dark, 
five thir five forty five probably, right? Probably. Ish. Who knows? Yep, five forty six. Five forty six, and it's probably gonna get dark at like six thirty. But we have a nice little view of the bay, and uh, don't want to go up this scary hill in the dark because it was hard enough going down it in the light. So let's see the waterfall. We have made it to Jaga Sutra Waterfall, and we have it all to ourselves. It is beautiful. It reminds me of Horsetail Falls that we saw back in Oregon, where it's just a long, very slender, very thin waterfall. It's crashing against these beautiful like, blackish red caves. So of course that's why we came here, but what I didn't know is right behind us, there's actually what they call holy waters, which are very important for a bathing um, Balinese Hindu ritual, where you kind of cleanse your body from evil and you purify yourself. So you can do that over here if you're dressed appropriately and you know the customs and correct way to uh, perform the ritual. And they have this beautiful waterfall here, which if you want to, you can actually hop in these little pools and take a dip and cool off, but we're a little short on time. It's already getting a little bit late. So we're just gonna maybe check out this waterfall for a little bit and then begin all of these stairs back up to our bike and then all of those slopes back to our Airbnb. Really cool though, definitely recommend coming here. Maybe give yourself a little bit more time than we did though. So now we're on our final day before we have to return to Ubud and I found one place on the map that I just had to stop by. So, so here we are at this place which grows salak, which is also known as snake fruit. And what's really cool is they have a little board here showing a scientific study um, they actually did on the content of antioxidants that salak contains because antioxidants are in things that, such as berries that are known to give to free radicals that can cause aging, cancer, all sorts of disease. And uh, phenols are really good things for health as well. That can be in stuff like red wine that makes it say it's good to have a glass of red wine today. So because of the polyphenolic antioxidants, they had a hypothesis that would be really good for health and to help things like just cancer and other sorts of things that can cause diseases and aging and all sorts of problems. And it shows that it actually does have a really good correlation to uh, improving those sort of things. So we're really excited to try it. One for the taste and cool to try something that's going to be healthy and unique to Bali, Indonesia, because that's where the research and the study was done, was the Denpasar uh, study. So we're really excited to try it. It's a really beautiful place as well, with lots of a garden, lots of different things to check out. So stay tuned. So here we have salak or snake fruit tea and salak coffee. Really excited to try guys with the beautiful view of this sort of volcano mountain in the background. Lovely. Wow. <laughs> so this is where the experience became truly incredible because a lady that owned the farm walked us through some of the actual fields and areas to let us pick salak and eat it. It looks like garlic, but it actually tastes like apple and pineapple. And this is where you can truly get the beautiful local side of Bali that you might not get in the more touristy areas, which we actually were heading a bit more towards stopping at the rice fields and Cedarman on the way. We finally made it to the start of Cedarman Loop here in Cedarman, Bali. And um, yeah, the loop just crosses the river in two different points. Someone's coming, so I probably should move in a second here. I'll tell you more in a second. Anyway, it crosses the river in two different points, and the first point we chose is this cool little yellow bridge, which is kind of like a not a drawbridge, not a rope, like suspension bridge. It's a little more solid than that, but definitely be a little fun. It's a little tight. And Vanessa, hopefully you can get some cool footage going across. Hopefully just fall into the river. But it's supposed to be a really scenic little drive. It makes a nice little loop in the town of Cedarman with some great views, maybe some rice fields. There's a cool silver shop where you can make your own ring from scratch and then build that with somebody, which is really cool. So hopefully we can see some cool stuff here. I'll briefly pass it through Cedarman. So from here, we ended up crossing this neat little bridge on motorbike, which was fun and exhilarating. And then we cruised around some of the most beautiful scenery and rice fields on the whole island of Bali, which I hopefully have the drone footage to do it justice. So just relax and enjoy the amazing views of Sidham in Bali. Hi everybody. So we are about to complete the Cedarman loop and we're just at this little pretty end of the loop it looks like where there's some really nice flowers and stuff growing among other crops here on the rice fields. Pulled over to get some drone footage, hopefully to show you the really cool landscape here in Cedarman. Hopefully we have some more cool stuff to see along the way, but we're gonna stop and get lunch at this well room just at the end of the opposite end of the Cedarman loop. So far it's been really pretty, but 
haven't really found too many access points to walk around and immerse myself with nature, but would I recommend the Cedarman Loop? I don't know. There's probably other cool things to do here, a little bit more interactive, but if you want to cruise around on a scooter and have some fun, we stop at a few places along the way, definitely would recommend it. So although the snake fruit was delicious, we were starving and ready for a savory meal to fill our bellies. Hey, so we finished the loop and we stopped at this little restaurant, a little hole in the wall along the way called Warung Turta Unda. And look at these views, everybody. I'm surrounded, literally in the thick of the rice fields. So lush and green, and I heard the food's really good. I heard they have really good curry, so I'm definitely excited to try that out. So this place was really incredible. Not only the food, which has this tempeh curry that I'm showing you, but the actual owner came and sat by us and talked with us and practiced his English. I did not record him, but it was a truly amazing wait and an amazing, unforgettable journey exploring Cedamon and East Bali. So thanks for checking out the video, everybody. I hope you can go on an adventure of your own like this someday if you're not already, and thank you for watching the video and checking out the rest of my Bali content. Wink, wink. See you in the next one. Peace.